Kuzang Pula, I'm Tenzin Rabki and this is the panel. On this week's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about the building structure of uh, the towns as well as a little bit about rural areas, more focused on towns and parking and basement parking and etc. Now joining me in the studio is Mr. Kunzang Nobu, the Director of the Department of Human Settlement. So sir, are there any set of rules uh, which guide building? For any construction that should happen in any part of the country, no? whether in urban or rural, there definitely is a rule. Nice. What, what the rule that we call is Bhutan Building Rules 2002. Nice. And uh, that is the, you can say, uh, main gui guideline where no, the developers or the individual construction builders should follow. My next guest is the Trompen of Simpu, Lakin Doji. Sir, um, does the Trompen, uh, how does the Trompen regulate, uh, how does the Trompen, let's say, regulate these rules? I think uh, we are <coughs> also strictly going by the Bhutan uh, building rules and also we have our set of rules called the development control regulations. Now we have also <coughs> Major Dojila, the executive secretary of the Chimputom Dela. Uh, sir, uh, do you all have inspectors who go and actually check on buildings and check if they are according to the rules and all? Uh, yes, uh, we do have. Uh, we do have, in fact, many inspectors uh, uh, monitoring all the constructions that are taking place within Timbu municipality because uh, that is what uh, we are supposed to do when we talk about regulation because uh, there is a plan and we are supposed to monitor and regulate what is happening within municipal uh, areas. Well, uh, we'll talk about inspectors a little later on in the show. Uh, for now, I'd like to go to Mr. Kinzangla. Um, is it necessary for buildings to have a basement parking in urban areas? Uh, basement parking is uh, an element of the building which uh, it is not, we cannot call it necessary but yes. it depends on the ground situation and of course uh, the whole intent, the objective of that there should be basement is mainly framed on the premise that there is urgency to have proper parking place yes. because now in a building without a parking of its own uh, it is going to be a problem for the owner himself nice. or herself and the tenants because as you know now almost everyone owns a car. Yes. Sir. So I would not say it's a compulsory but definitely there is a need that so that parking needs are met and one of the reason uh, or the uh, effort to meet that is if there is a basement to the building. Nice. But definitely when you say basement it has to be assessed see the feasibility, viability, both in terms of site location and structural safety of the building, structural nice. design of the building, because we are in a seismic zone. Nice. nice. So um, let me ask uh, Mr. Minjul, um, when you talk about uh, basement parking, we talked about basement parking not really being necessary, but uh, according to the plans, it is necessary for a building to have uh, a parking space uh, for its tenants. Now, uh, how does that work? How do you uh, allocate if... Uh, a building should have a basement parking or if they should have the parking outside the building? Uh, in the past, a uh, few years back, there was no provision for basement. But then uh, over a period of time, we, have, uh, we see a lot of vehicles coming in. So therefore, the parking has become a serious issue. And uh, realizing that and to address the parking issue, uh, the provision for basement was made. And the intention of having basement is basically to cater to the need. Uh, of parking the vehicles but in the process uh, what we also see in the course of implementation is uh, the plot size uh, most of the plot size uh, are less than 13 decimal yes. and uh, being in a very active seismic zone uh, we have to have this framed structure uh, meaning we need all these columns and uh, by doing so uh, it has become very difficult, in fact, uh, for the vehicles to park and uh, maneuver because the plot size is very small. So, well, the intention is basically to decongest uh, the vehicle parking uh, and uh, also to have the basement uh, parking for the building. Uh, in reality, 
most of the plots are having difficulty in terms of uh, having their parking and Last basement. So, um, what is the solution then? How, uh, how, what sort of a solution uh, does the city have? Any solutions planned? Uh, as of now, what we are trying to do or do is basically come up with uh, uh, multi-level parking in uh, some of the areas. That is uh, where we, our focus area is in terms of addressing the issue. And also in terms of having a basement parking. Uh, now what we are doing is we are making sure that when we approve basement, there is enough space for the vehicles to park. And only for those plots where we think it is feasible, we allow them to have the basement. Uh, for those plots which are very small where the parking cannot be uh, uh, implemented uh, even uh, at the approval stage itself, we, we say you cannot have the basement. Yes. So that is what we are doing. Yes. Mr. Kinle, uh, what solution do you think uh, there is for this problem? See, uh, first and foremost is what uh, Mr. Minjur said. We need to have common uh, good parking space. But that all depends on availability of land. Now, if you have a good uh, uh, size of the land available in that locality, then definitely we will go for it. Yes. But at individual level, like uh, initially the basements were kind of made mandatory, thinking that every house will have its own parking adequately placed in the basement. But since there are a lot of practical problems, I think uh, almost 80-90% of those basements turn out to be either used as storage or where possible as residential. So that has uh, put us into a problem by uh, going against the regulation. You know? Yes, and what sort of uh, penalties are there for people who don't follow these regulations? So we have tried to impose penalty in terms of uh, cash because by then it's too late to demolish and do alteration. It could only uh, hamper the strength of the building. So we just went on uh, imposing penalty that too in a affordable manner that they yes. can pay. Yes. About the, how much is the penalty lesson? Uh, in the past it used to be lakhs, yes. like four or five lakhs for a basement. Now we have reduced to less than a lakh. Yes. Because it is, uh, by building that, I think people are quite, I should say, innocent when they plan the building. Yes. Because they don't know how much the basement is going to cost. In my opinion, the basement would cost about two times the cost of a floor yes. above the ground. Yes. So after making the investment, they are you know, lost. They need to pay back the loan. Now they, the only way to do that is to utilize, utilize the basement as well. Yes. Yes. So to avoid all these issues, we thought about not allowing basement if it is not feasible to be used as parking. Yes. That was as good as you know, uh, making our system <clears throat> more better. Yes. Better so, for both the parties. So what happens uh, if someone, let's say now <coughs> I have a building. Yeah. I have a basement which I was not supposed to have as a shop or a rented space, mm -hmm. but now it's a rented space. I pay the fine. Is that the end of the story? Yes, because uh, <coughs> there's no other way out. Actually, we should make them pay the penalty as well as make them have enough parking space. Yes. Yes. But 13 decimal is what they have. And that doesn't work out. Yeah. So what we have tried to uh, discuss and try to come up with is let's regulate on the setback rules. <coughs> the old setback rule says that on every site there should be three meters setback from your boundary. Yes. Now with this system in place, what we felt was the three meter which is kept at the sites, at the back or in the front, is being wasted. Because if it is at the back, the vehicle is not going to go there. Yes. It's very difficult to turn around and go to that back side. So what we are now trying to do is, instead of three meters, we said let us keep three, uh, two meters. Yes. One meter that is being uh, compromised in the back will come in the front. Yes. Because after all, we are going to regulate the coverage. The coverage is not <coughs> going to go more than 40%. Yes. So once we control the coverage, whatever setback we are compromising on the sides or at the back, is going to come in the front. Nice, nice. So instead of five meters in the front, we might end up having 
six or seven meters. Which will have which much will more have parking much space. Much bigger space for the cars to park. Lastly, now talking about the alteration of the uh, set rules, does the Department of Human Settlement have any problem when uh, Tromde uh, sort of uh, wants to change the rules a bit? Uh, I think uh, such uh, small changes, no? Like uh, because these are within the purview of local area plan, nice. what we call is uh, local area plan, not the overall structural plan. No? As long as the land use precincts are not changed, and but like say small changes like, uh, like as Tasha mentioned, no? the Stromben mentioned on the setback, because as long as uh, division of that, as long as it helps to improve the environment, mm -hmm. to facilitate it or to give more parking space, uh, it should not be a problem. But uh, on the other side, well, it should not be a problem. But at the same time, I think it should not be frequent. Right. Or if it is so frequent, means then we have to find a way to change the rule itself, because otherwise it will become problem later. Right. So if that is a, a issue, then I think uh, uh, Tom or any local government should come with a proposal. No? Right. Okay, this rule is not now not any more feasible. We need to review. Then accordingly, you know, we sit together and try to review such rules, no? because I think rules are so dynamic. No? Lasla, have, you all, have you all uh, sat together mm -hmm. so far? Uh, so, but this? now this is something uh, I think uh, uh, the ministry is really thinking seriously that nice. we need to review this Bhutan Building Rules 2002 nice. because it's fairly old rule. Nice. And I think when this rule was made, now it's almost 10 years back. No? Nice. That time the conditions are different and now the, the you can see the whole development pattern has changed. Nice. So because of that, definitely there is need to change and in the process, from this will play a key role to give their feedback. So the ministry yes. does want to sit with the uh, Tromdes and discuss yes, these yes, issues? With all the local governments. Yes. Sir, so, uh, is the Tromde planning to come and sit with the Department of uh, Human Settlement and the ministry? Uh, I think uh, the message uh, I think probably you are trying to say is that probably there is a disconnect between the ministry and Tromde. I think that is not the case. No, no, not I really. I think we are I'm working asking, very closely and yes, uh, in terms of... Uh, this uh, building rules and regulation and also DCR I talked about, Development Control Regulations 2004. Uh, I think uh, with change in time and with change in all these uh, constructions, uh, with number of constructions coming up, uh, we definitely see a need to revise. And uh, this was also discussed uh, in some of the meetings we had with the ministry. Nice. And uh, it was already agreed that uh, DCR needs to be reviewed not only uh, rules and regulations, even the Timbu structure plan itself. Uh, uh, we are soon going to uh, form a committee that will review both the structure plan and the building rules and regulations nice. because uh, we need to come up with a different uh, set of uh, better, I mean enhanced uh, rules and regulations to address the emerging problems, especially like parking. Nice. I think uh, in the past, I think the setbacks were kept for different reasons, because uh, that time I think it was mainly to cater to all the uh, construction of septic tank. So now we have uh, con house connections directly uh, into our uh, sewer line, so there's no need for septic tank in some oh, of nice. the houses. Nice. And so therefore there is this adjustment that we can do. But having said that, what is important is the coverage, 40-45% uh, coverage that, uh, that each uh, plot owner is entitled will still remain intact. We are not going to change the coverage. We are basically, basically going to see how best we can create some additional space to address uh, the parking issues. Uh, Trumpen, does the city get uh, the plans from building owners when they want to build their houses? La? Yes. <clears throat> so, Mr. Minjur, I would like to ask you, uh, since you all get the plans, la, uh, and Trumpen also talked about uh, it being a problem where some people don't really understand that a basement is going to cost as much as uh, regular floors. La. So, don't, doesn't the city advise people if they have uh, parking provisions outside not to do this because it might be too expensive for them? La? Uh, all the drawings are uh, actually designed by professional architects and engineers. And therefore, I would assume that uh, there's a lot of discussion that takes place between the owner and the, uh, the engineers before finalizing the drawings. No, and uh, maybe, yes, uh, some of the owners may not be aware of the investment that, that will go in if they have to go for the basement. 
But uh, I'm sure there are also owners. Many, many of them will uh, know that uh, that uh, that that much investment will be incurred if they have to go for basement. Yes. But our role is basically not. Uh, we don't uh, actually tell them how much investment will be incurred. But our role is basically to see whether the plans will address the parking issue because that is the intention. The basement. Basement is not for uh, 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 other uh, addressing other issues, but it's basically to address the parking issue. Less so less. that is uh, where uh, we look into. Less, less, less. Now from the Department of Human Settlement side, uh, the, the Tromde, of course, uh, looks into these matters, like into the building and if it's according to regulation or not. What does the Department of Human Settlement do? Uh, we really don't go into the actual details of you know, how it is being approved how it is being I mean, constructed because that is the local government's role. No? Nice. Uh, where we are concerned is that whatever policy, strategies, rules are there, so if there, if there need be any changes, then definitely it falls on us. Nice. But uh, as far as the actual implementation is concerned, I think uh, we leave to the local government. Nice. And yes. uh, are there any changes which uh, you all would like to bring into this uh, System? Do you all have a system where you all assess the situation and then uh, try to see if you all can make changes? Of course, in the past, we haven't had uh, from the ministry uh, under making such reviews of the, how the plans have been implemented. But definitely now with the uh, formation of this new department, no? Department of Human Settlement, within the department we have a division called Compliance Development and Review Division. Right. So this division is mainly now to look at some of these issues once we have a plan uh, being issued or say how are how is it being implemented in terms of compliance to the plan thank you sir uh, mr trumpen we talked about that time uh, i think it's very important to clarify la. Um, we talked about the fact that uh, once buildings have basements and they pay a fine that uh, that's the end of the story la. now that's okay for the people who've already built buildings but uh, is it going to be the same for everyone who builds buildings? Then everyone might just say, you know, oh, the city is not going to do anything about it anyway. I'll just have to pay a fine and then I'll start building. Do you all have any regulations in place to prevent those things from happening? See, that's the very reason why uh, after encountering so many problems, when we impose penalty, it's not easy to, you know, comply with the uh, penalty that we impose. Then we confront and then there are, you know, sometimes not very uh, good uh, discussions. Yes. So therefore to streamline all this uh, we said that let us stop uh, issuing permits if the basement is not feasible as going to be parking but we will allow parking if the land size is good enough and can practically be possible for you know the vehicles to enter and exit. <coughs> so therefore uh, since the building permit the approval is being given by us we have the upper hand that yes you will not be allowed or yes you'll be allowed nice. so therefore we have no problem in uh, we are not going to reach that stage where we have to uh, uh, impose penalty nice. we nice. want to streamline our process and let us be you know happy in the it, let us make it win-win situation for both the parties nice. so that uh, you're prevented from ever happening yes nice. mr minju let's say that <coughs> it does happen it gets through the the plans get through like, somehow mm. when your inspectors go on site and they uh, go for their routine inspections uh, how many buildings have so far have you all stopped from uh, making like these uh, sort of basements or uh, plans which are not really uh, good like? uh, what uh, what we are doing now, as of now, is uh, as uh, Rash Trumpin mentioned, what has happened so far in terms of uh, approving basement with the intention that there will be parking and uh, what we see at the site with inadequate space, we have stopped those type of uh, approval. Now, the way forward that we are doing is basically to ensure that uh, whatever is planned in the basement as a parking is also feasible, practically feasible at site. So that is what uh, we try to ensure. Yes. So therefore, uh, from here after, we are not going to issue any uh, plans or approval that will show basement as a parking 
and in the reality that will not uh, provide not be feasible. yes not be feasible yes. so that is what we are going to do lastly but uh, uh, my question sir was uh, how many buildings have you all stopped from uh, being constructed till now would you have happen uh, have happen to have any uh, uh, numbers on that sir uh, i don't approximately let's see let's see um See, we have approved uh, buildings with basement about 57 yes. this year. Yes. And out of that, eight have violated the rules. Yes. So we have penalized them. Yes. But the remaining are being, you know, strictly monitored. Yes. Because when we approve, I, I think we should clarify here that it is not only approved as parking. It yes. could also be meant for storage. Mm. Like in the core area, where is the business center? we need basement to store the you know material that you're going to sell yes. so therefore if it is in the core area we definitely support basement to be used as storage yes. Yes. so therefore the number is around 50 plus about 50 yes. 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 so there are about eight who, who have <coughs> who have actually, violated and then yes. we have penalized them last yes. you have penalized but no constructions have been stopped so far no Last, last. Well, uh, I'd, I'm afraid we're almost running out of time, so I would like to get uh, your final thoughts on our situation. Uh, what do you think is the solution to this, uh, to this problem where we have uh, a lot of people uh, who are violating the rules? Uh, of course, no. The solution is my only uh, comment would be that we need to work together because otherwise, if we don't work together, no? that is uh, concerning all, everyone. No? The developers, the the policy makers, the administrators, implementers. Uh, unless we join ourselves, no? then I think uh, nothing is going to no? work well. So let us work together, and then I think we'll find way forward. No? Nasla, sir, your final thoughts on this uh, situation. What is uh, the solution? Uh, wherever there uh, there is adequate space, we would definitely like to encourage people to go for a basement because that is uh, going to address the parking issue which is the intention even in the past but wherever not uh, the basements cannot are not feasible we would definitely like to say that the people cannot go for this uh, type of constructions so that is what we are going to do from here last yes. mr trompenna your final views yeah, i think we have talked enough on basement <laughs> i would <laughs> like to also uh, inform the public that uh, the at the change in attic rule which has come in uh, <clears throat> maybe one year back. Yes. I think that has really uh, been implemented very effectively. Yes, sir. Yes. I think last time one of the papers uh, quoted us wrong, saying that the attic rule has again failed. Yes. In fact, they have not understood what is happening on the ground. Actually, there are buildings which are still continuing as having attic. Yes. Now, if you are allowed uh, four floors with attic, they are still continuing that way. Yes. But there are buildings which have now become five floors. Instead of four plus attic, it has become five, five floors. floors. Yes. And we have approved all those buildings and they have not violated. They have stopped at the fifth floor. Yes. So in the paper it was quoted that fifth floor has again have an attic. Yes. So I think this needs to be clarified and we have taken stern actions. Yes. One or two have violated yes. and we have you know, demolished, demolished, demolished the attic and also one of the jamthos. Jamthos are meant only for water tanks Nasla. and it was made into a habitable apartment. Nasla. So, so those, that is those I think we have taken stern action and it is going now as per the rules and we are happy that even the public is understanding us, they are cooperating with us and uh, we can do, uh, make changes if the enforcement is strong. At the same time, people understand us. Yes, so the other thing I would like to highlight is the building coat, uh, the color coat. Yes, you see different colors everywhere you go, very strange colors, violet, orange, you know, red. I think some of the striking colors we should try to avoid yes. because that spoils the look of the, you know, the locality, the city. So therefore, we are already uh, in discussion with the ministry as to how to adopt this uh, color codes 
where we can allow what type of colors. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, I'd like to thank the trumpet for joining me, uh, Mr. Kinlela, uh, Mr. Minjur from the city, as well as Mr. Kinzangla. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I would like to thank our viewers for joining us today. We discussed about the parking areas as well as basement parking, and also towards the end, uh, trumpet highlighted the colors of buildings maybe being too bright or not too bright. Maybe let's say that... Uh, he said that you have to be a little more sober colors, which makes the town look better, as well as attics, which is uh, which has really changed, and uh, the, the Trump Day is very serious about it. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. I hope that this has been an informative panel discussion for you all. Until next week, this is Tenzin Rabgi saying bye-bye.